And welcome back to the Get Lit Podcast, a podcast brought to you by Southern Lighting Solutions. My name is McHugh David, co-founder of Southern Lighting Solutions. I am here with my fellow co-founder. Go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. My name is Tarek Alamedine, and I am a co-founder of Southern Lighting Solutions. Hey, all right. I just looked into the camera. I know. Please talk into the microphone. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. At any rate, today we're going to be talking about something. It's a little ahead here, or it's a little ahead abroad. Not so much used here. Not yet. Well, yes and no, but... Continue. Okay, well, I'm going to be interested to hear you tell us where it's being used here in America. But we're talking about stretch sealing. Yes. Which is, you know, stretch material that has L- programmable LED boards casting images on it that, that shine through because of the way the material is. Kinda? Kinda. Okay. Give us a definition of what stretch sealing is. Well, stretch sealing is just, it's a fabric. Okay. And in the U.S., you see a lot of it in light boxes. Okay. Or they use just flat acrylic panel. They use flat acrylic panels or, you know, nowadays, uh, you know, stretch ceiling where you can print almost any pattern on it. And uh, it can take any shape that you can put around um, around a mold, if you will. And these molds, it's, it's almost like an aluminum skeletal structure, if you will. Okay. And you heat the fabric up, you stretch it. That's why it's called stretch sealing or stretch fabric. And um, when you set it into the grooves within the actual uh, channel structures, it takes a rigid form. And they can be backlit completely. Gotcha. So, you know, one of the things that... And yes, it's used a lot more abroad than it is over here, especially in more... Retail applications in more hotel, residential, what have you. Right. One of the things I was going to say is this is kind of a marketer's dream because you don't have to pay for a huge billboard. You don't have to pay for some stagnant sign and you don't have to pay for some screen like a, a television screen or, or it, it gives you it, it. It's still a static image, but it gives you the ability. Uh, I guess you can say there's more flexibility to it. Y- yes, um, you know, if you're using normal strip light behind it or flexible tile or whatnot, you know, that can be either single color, can be RGB, um, could be digital, uh, digital RGB, so t- um, addressable there RGB is. is what is the word I was looking for. Um, behind the white gloss, you know, the sky's the limit, really, for, for whatever you program. It just appears like a nice, smooth, you know, functional color, if you will. Describe some of the, some of the stretch ceiling, uh, you know, displays that you've seen. Um, stuff, I'll say stuff that we've seen and stuff that we've actually done. Okay. So, um, in your typical stretch ceiling, which is, which is completely backlit, um, usually they're on the ceiling. And they'll usually be either a static color, usually white, or they'll take a pattern. Patterns, for the most part, are usually um, taken from the sky. So it'll be a sky image, if you will. Sure. And it'll be a light blue with clouds, a bird, whatever that you have uh, that you have up there. And then you can turn it off, or you can turn it on. You turn it on; it's now lighting up your entire room. It's it's a direct and indirect source of light, if you if you will, because that pattern can act as a diffu- is is acting as a diffuser, if you will. Okay. So I, and I mean, it could be anywhere from marketing and artistic, but now you're saying it has pract- it more. I guess you could say more practical applications. Sure, absolutely. I mean, with stuff that we've done with it in 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 ballrooms, let's say, or in um, in showrooms. You can get all kinds of funky uh, wall structures, ceiling structures. You can, you know, um, make little cubes out of them or spheres, whatever, pattern them up and line them up on the inside. I mean, it's, it's really, stretch ceiling has the, the, the functionality to be realistically, whatever you can stretch it around, you can light it up. Right. I mean, the, it, it, it opens up a whole different level of creativity. And a lot of times, too, you don't just have to shine through one color. 
No, I mean, again, that can be if you're using an RGB board or RGB white or digital RGB, adjustable RGB. So let's let, let's kind of lay that out for a second. When you're talking about a stretch ceiling, what's the most detailed thing that you've seen projected onto a stretch ceiling? See, again, you're not projecting onto it. Okay. How, how would you define that? Um, think of taking any colored image and printing it on your standard color printer okay. on a white piece of paper and then putting it, you know, let's say five inches in front of you and putting a flashlight behind it. Got it. And that's And you, you'll see the light come through it. Sure. That's effectively what stretch ceiling is. Gotcha. So the, the stretch ceiling is going to come pre-done, but it can come pre-done with anything your heart desires. 2D images, 3D images. I mean, there's there's really a lot going on with it. And by having... So let, let's back up a little bit when we're talking about RGBW, which is red, green, blue, and white. Yep. Uh, or when you talk about single, single addressable. Single color. Single color addressable. That, which one has more utility? Okay, so it all depends on the application. Okay. Okay, so single color, single color. You know, warm white, red, green, you know, uh, cool white, pick your poison. RGB is, you can cycle through colors, you know, it's a set of moods. You want a red, green, blue, orange, yellow, whatever. Digital is... You could effectively, if it was a white type, you could play a movie, if you will. And those LEDs would project, would give you the projection of the movie on the on the white stretch ceiling surface. Right, so the in that case, the stretch ceiling would be sort of a blank canvas. Kind of. And the RGB addressable, each chip would be casting something different to produce that. That's, that's and that's exactly, you hit the, the nail on the head there. With RGB, say you have, you know, a one meter strip with 100 LEDs on it. If it's just a standard RGB, those strips will always be red, green, or blue, or whatever color you set it to, right? With addressable, every individual chip on that strip, on that one meter strip, acts as a single light point. And that's why you need these very um, uh, industrial type controllers control them, to program right. them, to, right. to send out the exact signal, input, color, whatever that you need to to make whatever pattern, et cetera, you have come to life. Sure. And so really, the there's a lot of utility. Absolutely. A lot of flexibility. Absolutely. But it's also easy to transport. Oh, yeah. So that, that you know, that's kind of what makes it very... You roll it up like a carpet. Right. And that's kind of what makes it... Uh, and it's highly durable. Um, it's waterproof, they're fire rated, fire rated materials, so they're never gonna, you know, they're not gonna burn. Right. I mean, in a raging inferno, sure, but I mean, they're not gonna be, if you just, you know, by accident, you hit it with, uh, with, uh, uh, with a lighter, it's not gonna go up in flames. Right. And all, all that's obviously to keep everything protected. Right. I mean, it, it follows very stringent, um... Uh, British and American code. Sure. So and EU code. Earlier, I, I kind of asked you, like, what what what's the most detailed one you've you've ever seen? Oh God, I I, I have seen um, stretch ceiling where it was printed almost like the facets of a diamond and sapphires and rubies, and printed in a certain way and embedded on um. A, on a uh, ceiling structure which wasn't fully straight, so it almost looked like it was shimmering when they had the lights on, when they turned it on. Oh, wow. And they started controlling it. So you had that flow, and it didn't matter. Every angle you looked at it, if you stood in a different, different spot, looked different. That's neat. It was, it was cool is the only word I yeah. can. <laughs> it was very cool. It was very cool. So when you're talking about America, where are some of the places that you've seen this before? In the U.S., I um, haven't seen it as prevalent as I'd like to say. I have. I mean, I've seen them in uh, uh, some amusement parks, um, like the the indoor 
the indoor haunted houses or whatnot they have those uses i've seen them in a few retail outlets that's that's about it so you'd like to see that expanded oh absolutely i mean uh in the middle east you know saudi dubai you see entire malls which have this all over the place i mean we're doing a um a project right now or we're we're bidding on a project right now and and the uh in the middle east uh where they've got almost uh ten thousand square meters of this in an office setting. How do they set that up? Like like what's the setup? What are they using it for? Just this accent and offices or you know what we ask ourselves that question all the time, but it's it's all stretching and it's all it's all backlit and I mean it's all it's all controlled by um uh by what's a DALI system, which is which is a very um highly interactive type of lighting control mechanism. Okay. And uh so they'll be able to light it up by quadrants, by rooms, by sections, by, you know, if they wanted to, when there was an emergency, they could effectively just turn on, you know, make an arrow out of the out of the thing and say, "Follow this roads." Oh, that's kind of you neat. know, they, they, it's really whatever they want to do. Sure. I mean, and and one of the levels, you know, um, they've got about two thousand square meters, which is made to look like a sky. So people feel like they're outside, I guess. It's 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 in the gym room. Okay. The gym and pool room uh, that they have uh, that they have in this building, and it's you know made to look like a sky. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, what uh, you know? Any other like what's the craziest? Uh, like that's the coolest way you said. Like you were in that shop that had the 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 gyms on it. What's the craziest way you've ever seen it used? Um, I saw a, and I actually like this a lot. Um. Where you take a, it's not a matte black, it's a uh, very reflective black, uh, black material. You put it on the ceiling, and then you use fiber optic light. So when you turn it on, it looks like a starry-eyed sky. Wow. That is... That sounds pretty cool. That is cool. That, that is... that is Kind of crazy, but kind of cool. Crazy, but really, really cool. Um... I've seen it done, uh, surprisingly, in a lot of houses, residential properties, um, in kids' rooms that, you know, they just, you know, they go to sleep, turn off the lights, and turn on their starry-eyed skies. You know, we used to have, uh, way back when, you know, remember those little fluorescent stickers uh -huh. that you used to put on the ceilings? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is just a slightly more advanced like, version of li it. A little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit, a little yeah. bit. That, that's kind of interesting. Now, I'm one of those people, I like it really dark. But I know, I know what you're talking about. You know, they had they had the old stickers, and they upgraded to like the plastic pieces. And yep. so now apparently they have even a newer version. Oh yeah, and if you if you get the fiber optic system to be you know addressable, it'll twinkle. <laughs> yeah, it's a little twinkle, twinkle, little star. There you go. And so uh, something to add to the ambiance of your child's room, or yeah. maybe even your own. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean. It's really the 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 sky is the limit. I mean, there's hundreds of kinds of fabrics, you know, standard colors, and then an infinite almost number of pictures that you can that you can put. I mean, realistically, with stretch ceiling, if you wanted to, you could have the Sistine Chapel. Well, there you go on your ceiling. Well, there you go. You can have it right, uh, Mr. You could Le have Leonardo. Le yeah, right there, M Michelangelo. Michael. Oh yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Wow. Oof. That is. That is. That That's is. That's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Yeah. If only I could point the camera at him right yeah, now. Yeah. And yes, to yeah. our the people that are just listening in. Yes, I am looking square at the camera and. Pointing him out for that one. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. That was bad. I I'm so sorry. Mr. Newspaper Editor. Can't yeah. tell the difference between Leonardo and Michelangelo. <sighs> God forbid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. One painted, one invented. Yeah. Uh, pardon me on that one. Uh, so at any rate, talking about inventions, this is uh, not new. No. But it's something that hadn't been in America very long. I think it's been here for a while. It's just not being economically viable for most people. But now it is. Maybe. Um, no, it is. It is. It is. I mean, uh, I mean, um, 
it's very selective the the countries that actually make this fabric right you know uh the the most famous are the uh the french parisol okay you know uh, vive la france vive, yeah vive la france yeah um so no yeah that's i mean stretchy like it's just the more i think about it the more i'd like to see it applied here there's just again so many possible uh opportunities to do that i just don't think people are as aware of it or uh, you know it's it's maybe you know price to cater to the uh the wealthy and not you know and it's not for everyone but i mean uh i like it right and and it has its utility its flexibility i, I mean you can put you can put lights in it. you could put you could put you know two by twos in it you could put two by fours in it you could put linear lights in it you could put i mean uh, you could put down lights in it it's and it'll right, keep it the could, rigid structure. I mean, that's that's not going to change. Right. It 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 doesn't have to be something crazy like a bunch of addressable RGBs. Like no, 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 no. I, uh, it could be just your typical ceiling, if right. you wanted. I mean, you know, your Sistine Chapel with lights coming out of it. Why not? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Some people might say why, but we say why not. So, uh, y- you know, you can call us about this stuff. Right. Uh, I any, mean, you anything else it, you'd you like? Can to... use, well, I mean, you could use it in um, modern day light boxes. Right. Which is what you find a lot of over here. Everybody talks about a light box. Right. You know, they use an acrylic panel in front. Well, you know, I'd prefer to use stretch ceiling. Right. It's crisper. It's cleaner. Well, we have that available. Yep. We can get it for you. Yep. We can also do the lights behind it. We do lights behind it, absolutely. Um, and we we're we're developing this right now with with one of our close partners over here. And time is going to tell if we're able to get it to take off, but we think that we will. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, my partner here, if you'll introduce yourself. Ah, <sighs> Tarek Alamadin. Oh, co-partner of Southern Lighting Solutions. Yeah, he's looking at me like, come on, come on, come co-owner, on, get co-partner. with the pro. Yeah, whatever, just get co-founder. on with it. It's been a day. My name is McHugh David. Also, really? co-partner, 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 <laughs> co-partner and founder mixed together. We're having, we're having, yeah, we're right. Co-founder, co-partner, co-owner, whatever you want to call it, of Southern Lighting Solutions. Uh, we do appreciate you guys joining us. Please remember, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Uh, we are also online www.southernlightinginc.com. You it is being it. upgraded. It is. We are we are going through an update. We also finally have a fully updated catalog, so that's been fun. Yep. It was a labor of something. Uh, it was an interesting uh, task and journey going yes. through that. Uh, we just talked about updating our office in the podcast previous to this. That was fun, and where we intend to go from here. Uh, and we will check you all out next time. Inshallah. Inshallah.